I first watched Johan Rank's Spaceman the night it premiered on Netflix. And like many others, I've been wondering, is Hanush real? So I watched the film a few more times. I looked up the book by Yaroslav Kalfarsh, which Colby Day's screenplay is based on. And I've come to the conclusion that I just don't care. <laughs> I don't care if Hanush is real or not. I love him anyway. And not just because he is voiced by the cosmic treasure that is Paul Dano. <laughs> I discovered that a more important question, for me at least, was why? Why is Hanush the way that he is? Why is he a spider as opposed to an intergalactic worm? Uh, why is he all up in Adam Sandler's face? What's the deeper meaning of it all? And I've come up with some ideas I'd like to share with you and perhaps get your opinion on if you're not too shy. So join me, skinny human, <laughs> as we journey to uncover the secrets of this beautiful little love story. So a lot of people are afraid of spiders, right? But why is this particular spider so offensive to Jakob, at least initially? Well, Hanush has the remarkable ability to cross all kinds of boundaries, seemingly at will. So he enters the spacecraft, which I imagine is tightly sealed. He enters Jakob's dreams. He is privy to his thoughts. And for someone like Jakob, who has put up barriers between himself and the world, uh, most notably between himself and Lenka, this is a nightmare situation. <laughs> so sharing both his spacecraft and his mind with Hanush is a challenge for him because it puts pressure on Jakob where it hurts the most. Now, you can even say that the title of the movie, Spaceman, is not just another word for astronaut or cosmonaut or someone who goes to space, but refers to someone like Jakob who requires a lot of space or distance between himself and everyone else. He doesn't want anyone getting too close. Uh, he refuses to see a psychiatrist. He isn't honest with Peter back at Mission Control. And in a subtle but revealing dream, we understand he is even anxious about Lenka getting too close. Uh, it's the dream where she is walking through the house that they are building, and she says to him, this is going to be our home, Jakob. Now, this dream is significant because the house doesn't have any walls yet, right? It's just the wooden frame because it's still under construction. And I think that's why Jakob awakes from this dream as if it were something to fear. It's a house with no walls and there's nowhere to hide in a house with no walls. So Hanush's sort of magical abilities, which allow him to trespass upon Jakob's personal space, is a problem, or perceived to be a problem by Jakob. But I also believe that it's not just what Hanush does. It's also the way he looks. Hanush's very body, his physical self, is for Jakob a subtle reminder of everything that's gone wrong with Lenka. So at some point, we are shown one of Jakob's memories of a fight he had with Lenka. And Lenka says something very interesting. She says, when you love someone, you are meant to amputate a piece of what is you and replace it with a piece of the other. Uh, do you get that I amputated so much of myself, I don't even know who I am anymore? Now, of course, when we talk about something being amputated, we are usually referring to a limb or a part of a limb. So you could say that the reason Hanush is a spider in the story and not a worm, let's say, is because of his legs. Uh, I think his legs are meant to bring to mind all of the amputated parts of Lenka. 
And it's not just Hanusha's legs. Even Hanusha's eyes seem to refer back to Lenka. Uh, if you recall, in one of his memories, we see Jakob frying some eggs while he and Lenka are on the phone, and she is telling him about her miscarriage. Now, you'll notice that the eggs which Jakob has burnt are in the exact configuration of Hanusha's eyes, or the way that Hanusha's eyes are set into his head. Uh, there are even times when Lenka's baby bump looks like Hanusha's abdomen, especially in the shot of Lenka swimming in the pool at the sanctuary for single mothers. Uh, here, her reflection in the water also has the effect of doubling her limbs, uh, reinforcing the connection with Hanush even more. So Hanush is like Lenka's metaphorical doppelganger, <laughs> the very sight of which forces Jakob to confront all the guilt-inducing aspects of his relationship. So for me, when he hugs Hanush, in a way, he's also hugging Lenka. Now, Lenka is also trying to get inside Jakob's head, just like Hanush. But why is Jakob like that in the first place? Why is he so closed off? Well, I think there are two things we can sort of point to here, one of which is explicitly mentioned in the movie, and that is the trauma of discovering his father was an informant for the Communist Party, and all the guilt and shame Jakob suffered as a result, sort of by association. But you can also say that just growing up in a communist state, in a surveillance state, where everything you say and do is potentially being scrutinized for even the smallest hint of dissent, uh, that can really mess you up. And it looks like he actually witnessed someone being tortured by his father. Now, why was this man being tortured? Either he said something he wasn't supposed to say against the party and he's being threatened, or they're trying to get information out of him, or both. Uh, whatever the case may be, Jakob seems to have come to the conclusion that if someone finds out what's really inside of you, only bad things can happen. So I think that's the problem with Jakob. That's why he's so closed off. Uh, he is terrified of opening up because in his experience, only bad things can come of it. Now, it also doesn't help that the surveillance state is alive and well in Commissioner Tuma's space program because even though the movie is set after the fall of Czech communism, Jakob continues to live in a sort of communist state on board his spacecraft. Uh, he is constantly being watched. He's being told what to do, told what to say. Uh, his messages from Lenka are being screened. Uh, they may even be spying on Lenka because they somehow know that she has gone off to her mother's house. I mean, how would they know that otherwise? So even the environment that Jakob currently finds himself in recalls his past trauma. Now, there's a lot more that can be said about this movie. I could do a whole video on the biblical illusions alone. <laughs> they are everywhere. Did anyone else pick up on any of them? Uh, they're subtle, but they're there. I especially am curious about if anyone picked up on who the Jesus figure is. Uh, there's a Jesus in this movie. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you know who it is. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my attempt at an analysis. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Till then, goodbye, skinny human.